What is up, nerds? Happy day to ya! I hope that your day is going well and swell. If this is your first time coming across my channel. My name is Zach. My channel is Adventures with Zach. So let's go on the adventure. I forgot my SD card on my camera. And it's at home, on my bed, literally. I was trying to figure out like a perfect like time setting. I was gonna do like the whole Christmas lights and everything. Um, but today I am going to be introducing the new app by McDonald's. I just figured, you know, I'm in the McDonald's parking lot. I might as well tell you guys about the app of McDonald's. So of course I can't show you on my phone. However, if you download the McDonald's app, you guys can join and um, sign up with your email and make a password, cell phone number attached to it. And you can also attach your card to the um, McDonald's app, as well as picking any meals that's available to you. So pretty much if you guys wanted to do like um, a free quarter pounder with chicken nuggets, um, you guys can do like the french fries on the weekends. Um, you also can even do breakfast and you can also do frappes and coffee and cookies and a whole bunch of jazz. So, um, with that being said, I personally have my own McDonald's bag here. And I was going to be talking about something that everybody wants me to talk about lately is my recovery and basically like how I recovered from, I guess you can call this a mukbang. We're basically eating our feelings away. So, I'm here for it, but basically what I'm going to be talking about is why I got admitted to a suicide clinic and why I was feeling that way and what made me feel that way. Um, so... If you are going to be crying in this video, you might as well just cry. This happened in March and I remember the day before I was like having a rough day at work and I just didn't feel like I was wanted by anybody. I felt like my coworkers didn't like me. I felt like my family members didn't like me. I felt like my siblings hated me. And like I had no one to talk to. And I felt like I was always at Judy and Connor's house and I felt like I was just bothering them all the time. So when I was going through this, I didn't really have anyone to go to because like in my head, I'm thinking that I'm a bothersome and like I'm annoying and like, so I really felt alone. And I was telling my, my therapist, you know, like I don't plan on, you know, being alone anymore. And she was like, I, she really took it as in like, oh, like, that's good. Like, you know, like, you don't want to be alone anymore. Like, so you're going to be like, you know, asking people for help. And like, that's not what I meant at all. And I was like, no, like, I'm, I'm done. And I hung up <laughs> on her. And she called me back. And she was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm basically like, I want to end it. And like, I don't want to be here anymore. This and that. And like, she's like having like conversations with me. And. So there's people everywhere. So like, I'm going to lock my door to have me admitted. And I got admitted. And like, like I said before, 
um, I feel like the place was like a good place for like a learning experience if like you've never been, but honestly, like I wouldn't recommend anyone going to a suicide clinic because like, especially if you're like not a druggie or like, like you don't do drugs, just because like, man, it's a very like scary thing. Like the person that was like, like in the same room as me, literally like would like beat the shit out of himself. And like when he first came in, like he had like bruises all over his face. He had a black eye, busted lip. Like he looked like he got beat the fuck up. And I was like, damn. This dude got his ass beat. And later on in that night, like, he literally was like, like, I heard grunting. And I was like, what the fuck is that? And, like, he was, like, beating himself. Like, he was literally punching himself in the face. And I'm like, I could never. I could never just hit myself for no reason. Like, you know, like, I, I just couldn't. Like, I'm strong, but I'm not that strong, you know? And so I'm, like, ignoring it, trying to ignore it, because, like, he's, like, literally, like, grunting so loud. Finally, the nurse comes in, turns on this bright-ass light, and she's, like, um, I forgot his name. Wrote his... We all had like names like on our, um, on the doors and like whoever you were roomed with, like your, their name was on there too. And I got chicken nuggets and uh, with some sweet and sour sauce. Um, um, so Basically, she was just trying to figure out, like, you know, what was going on with him, why he's beating himself, blah, blah, blah. He starts crying. They start counseling him. I'm over here like, bro, I'm just trying to sleep. And I put the covers over my head. And then, like, maybe, like, 10 minutes later, then they, like, leave, you know? And he goes to sleep. I go to sleep. And the next morning, like, they want to do, like, games and stuff. I literally didn't participate in shit. Like, they wanted me to, like, do all these fucking games. They wanted me to play fucking puzzles and shit. Like, no, I'm going to stay in my room. Because there's fucking people outside that are fucking crying nonstop. I got my roommate's beating himself and you expect me to go play puzzles with him. He ain't all the way there. He don't know how to put puzzles together. This is me thinking, you know. And I'm I finally like asked the lady. I was like, "Do y'all have any books?" <laughs> like I've never I never in my life have just been like, "I'm just going to fucking read." Like, you know, like I was just like you know what? I'm just going to give it a whirl. And she was like, yeah, we have plenty of books. So she took me, she took me to like the book area. These books were like from 1918, 1970s, like old ass paper books. So I finally find like a book that's like relevant in my time era. And it was Shiloh. And I'm literally like reading the book of Shiloh. <laughs> and I literally like finished that book like the whole entire time that I was there. And I, uh, I, you know what? Like the best part of like that whole entire experience was like the food. Bro, they had different food every day. Like I have, I did not eat the same food, not once. 
Like they had salad that you could eat every day and that was it. Like that was literally like the best. Like they had cut pies, they had banana pudding, they had sweet potato pie. Like literally they had so many freaking like stuff. Like it wasn't even funny. Like they had, dude, so many cars are like rolling like deep. I think they probably think I'm doing nasty stuff in here because my windows are like getting tinted. But my lights are on, so. Anyway, I've been going on with my business. Like they should. And I literally was like, damn, this is like the best like meal place meal place I've ever been to. So like I'm like eating cheeseburgers, I'm eating rice and chicken. Like I had the whole thing made. And had orange juice yogurt like literally like my life was made in this place but it was just so depressing when it came to like trying to go out your room it was just depressing like people were crying and at first for like the first like few days like I didn't like take any phone calls I didn't want anyone calling me because I I just didn't I was unstable because I wasn't taking my meds and I like just didn't want to be around anybody and once I got stable I then started to like um come to my senses and like start calling people back and start like talking to people people you know tell me like how important I was and what I meant to them um and when you're still in this state you still think that you're a problem and like it's hard to get people to understand that because they don't they've never felt that way and some people literally try to tell me how I feel. And it's like, okay, you just became me out of nowhere. And now you're telling me how I should feel as a person. And that that's like one of my biggest things that like I suffered with. Like I literally couldn't stick up for myself. And I still have that problem, but it's not as bad as it was. And... I felt like a disappointment to every single family member. Like, every single family member. Because I felt like I wasn't good enough. And I felt like I wasn't worth anything. So here I am on the phone. And, you know, you have all these family members and friends and they're calling you and telling you like you know like they love you and they miss you and they don't want you to go so it gets more depressing and like that's kind of like when I was like okay I, I want to get off the phone now I've been on the phone and I go back in my room I'm like literally like I didn't have a gym so I was depressed about that and I like was like doing push-ups, sit-ups like in my room. Like literally like my roommate would like look at me sometimes and like I like wanted him to say something because and then I would be like, bro, you have no room to talk. You literally punch yourself at night. <laughs> Last day in the clinic, I realized that I was getting better, but I didn't feel better. So um, I kind of like told them that I felt better even though I didn't and I was like yeah like I feel so much better like I completely faked it like I was like oh I feel so much better like you know like I don't even know why I was thinking that stuff this and that but in my head I'm still thinking about it like I was thinking about doing it again but like not to the extent that I was you know and um I even like try to rush to go home 
and like all my family members like no like you're not going home <laughs> like they literally would not let me go home and i was like you know in the car forever by the way one of my pet peeves is something that literally grinds my gears is being in a car for a long ass time and it doesn't bother me as much if i'm driving but if someone else is driving and i am like literally in the car with them and they are literally driving so slow or they just driving with no music or they're just driving to be driving that is one of my pet peeves and i have so many family members that do that i have so many family members that drive to be driving or they drive with no music and they just want to have all these random conversations or they just drive so slow like who who who, who taught you to drive that way like the moral of the story is was i okay to leave the suicide clinic no sorry guys my camera died or not died but like it just stopped i think it just got overheated or whatever i don't know but back to what i was saying is like half the time that i'm with family members or when i'm with people or my friends or this and that I'm just depressed and I don't, I didn't, well, not currently, but like back then I was just super depressed. Like, because like I'm here, here I am watching all these people, all my friends have a great old time. They're living their best life. They got kids, they got a house, they got money, they got this, that, blah, 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 blah. And here I am single as fuck no motherfucking kids i get along with some of my family members and i feel alone so it kind of like and i can't and i can't describe what that means but what I can say is that no matter how many times that someone says, oh, I love you, Zach. Oh, I love you, Zach. You're so important to me. It doesn't feel that way. And I, and I hate to say that because you're like, what do you mean? Like, you know what I mean? Because there are some people that really don't know what that means. Like, they're just like, how do you not, how do you not? get that in your head that I just told you that I loved you because when you're in a depression mode that's so bad where you want to commit suicide and you almost do it you literally am telling yourself that no one gives a fuck about you and you're literally telling yourself like no one gives a shit about you like you're worth nothing. Like you literally are telling yourself this over and over and over. And I still have times where like, I feel that way about myself, but I have to like, you know, bully my own damn self and be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, you know what I mean? And when you're explaining the way that you feel as in like, hey, like I feel worthless or I feel hopeless or I feel alone, people just, be like oh it's like don't worry like you have me blah 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 blah. but in my mind and in my head and in my spirit i still feel alone no matter what you say it's not gonna change like i still feel alone why is there csi y'all i'm in the ghetto or something but um and i'm not saying like not everyone knew like what i was going through so like they're basically saying like Oh, so you're basically saying, like, you don't know what I was going through and I can't relate to you in, in that aspect. No, that's not what I'm saying. But when you're depressed, you kind of click to certain people. And I don't know what it is, but you click to certain people that you want to relate to. And um, when I was going through my whole depression, I was actually clicking more 
with my dad and I was actually like you know hanging out with him a lot more and talking to him and like um, you know getting to know him and like his story and everything um, so like you know he passed away and you know I kind of like wanted to like dig in a little bit more so I started to like you know get into his like family getting to know like more on his like Spanish side of the family because I already know his mom's side of the family so like you know that's different but you know I don't really know that much about his his own dad's side of the family so I like you know really investigated and like started to, like to talk to them and getting to know them and I met some like awesome cool cousins and like I still talk to them to this day um they even follow the channel so that's great but um it's been a crazy one for sure like it's crazy to me to think that I was even going down that road because like I didn't think that I would let depression get to me but when I look back on my life and I look back on the things that has happened to me I pushed a lot of stuff under the rug and I didn't tell people a lot of things about me that I could have just you know told them or I could have just shared it with them or I could have just you know um been like well I guess certain things no but like certain things yes but you know um when I got taken advantage of when I was you know freaking 15 or however you're how uh, however old you are when you're in seventh grade but anyway in the beginning of seventh grade I got a taken advantage of and like I literally swept that under the rug. Like, I literally, like, would not tell anybody that that happened to me. You know, like, you're just replaying and replaying. Like, I remember, like, in school, I used to, like, always, like, go to my room and close my door. And I would literally cry every single day after school. I, like, got bullied so bad. I, you know, like... There was a point in time where, like, people, like, wanted to jump me. I, like, had so many, like, bad experiences at my school. And I would probably say, like, high school was probably my peaking, I guess you can say. Where, like, I started making a whole bunch of friends. And I started, you know, uh, clinking on people. And, like, started hanging out with them more. And, like, high school, I actually had a lot more confidence to actually like you know get out and hang out and you know um travel like with my friends um but yeah elementary school and high and middle school was like the worst and a lot of like cultures it's weak to make it seem like the guy is like going through shit and that is the most annoying thing to me because it's like we're all human we all do things and we're all gonna say things and we all love things we all we all like we're freaking human beings we're machines but i feel like the culture the culture aspect of each individual sucks because like here you are like you know me being spanish african-american native american those are all three strong ass traits for like the men's side like you know what i mean like back in the day with the Indians you have Indians fucking the guys are freaking chiefs and shooting bow and arrows out of trees and swinging trees and shit then you know you have Spanish people and like you know they're headstrong you know hard working they like to build shit and then you have you know the black dominants where they are just tough as nails anyway because you know the whole slavery shit so it's like you have so much to, you know, go through. <laughs> this guy um, was throwing cans at his truck and he like um, missed the bucket. And he looked at me because I looked at him like doing it. And he looked at me and he was like, <laughs> and he got out of his truck and put it in the thing. Because it's a huge thing here because like littering is like bad. Like if you litter here, you can probably go to jail. But... Um, I definitely want to get into more about um, mental health and I want to like put it more into my channel because I feel like I was ignoring it for so long 
and now that I'm like comfortable with it and I'm reading on it like I'm literally all day today I have literally been listening to podcasts on mental health being strong being your own person being loved by yourself I literally have been like podcasting it up and like I I'm taking like you know you know meditation breaks I'm like you know literally telling myself affirmations every day so like I feel like slowly but surely I will be mentally strong enough to handle certain situations and certain people but I feel like right now I just need to take like certain breaks because you know um I'm not all the way there yet you know so yeah and um hopefully after this video you know like a whole bunch of podcast people reach out because I would love to like talk about that I would love to talk about you know not just my journey but like people writing about their journeys to me that's what I was saying I, I just feel like you know um I pushed away mental health and I feel like I need to bring it back into my channel and I feel like I need to acknowledge it because I feel like a lot of people even though they don't say they don't have problems I feel like they do and they just don't want to share it and I feel like I've done that and it doesn't work out for you because hiding things and letting things not get to you and not expressing how you feel eventually puts a toll on you but it's late as hell and it's almost one o'clock so I'm definitely going to go to bed <laughs> but um, honestly guys if you guys are feeling any kind of suicidal thoughts or if you guys are feeling down or feeling like you need someone to talk to um, the links down below will definitely help you out there are therapists out there there are suicide people out there waiting for your calls um, if you need them they will be there for you um, if you guys do not have a therapist or a psychiatrist, you guys definitely need to invest in that because that is like the best thing ever. I hope that, um, this video did not upset anyone. I hope that, um, if you were upset, you, uh, help others that definitely need help. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. And like I said, my name is Zach. My channel is Adventures with Zach, and thank you for coming on this adventure. Peace out. Bye.